Welcome to the Stream of David on Om Times Radio with best-selling author, channel, and creator of the Taya Spiritual Practice. David Strickle shares the eternal wisdom of the consciousness called the Stream. The Stream of David show is fun and informative and seeks to not only answer all your spiritual and life questions, but to also provide proven tools to navigate life's obstacles and find a path to joy, clarity, and abundance by hearing the Stream's no-nonsense, direct approach to spirituality. Prepare to have your mind blown and receive clarity on your life and the universe like you perhaps never have before. And now, your host... David Strickle. Hi, welcome to the Stream of David Show. I am here today with my good friend, Debbie G. Hi, Debbie. Hi, I'm so excited to be here. (laughs) And if I sound a little odd, it's because I'm uh, speaking to you through my iPhone because my uh, home studio is having technical difficulties today. So I'm coming to you via iPhone. I believe, Debbie, you're actually on the studio app yourself, so you probably sound better than I do. Well, that's just a given, right? Right. <laughs> just of course you do. You always sound better than I do, and much <laughs> much prettier than I am as well. Well, thank you very much. Uh, actually, I am on the studio, and I'm finding this experience to be quite fun. I like this. This is a little bit different than what we're used to. Yeah, we're used to being on video. Now we don't have to, you know, dress up or anything. We can just. <laughs> I can make faces and everything, and and nobody will ever know. <laughs> No one's going to judge you for how you look, just how you sound. And unfortunately, I don't sound as good today because I'm on this, but it's okay. I got through anyway. The show must go on. The the producers at home times are fantastic and uh, and got me through. And, you know, it's the last minute. And it's funny because uh, five minutes before I usually, you know, pop on, uh, all of a sudden the lawn people show up a day early and they're out there cutting grass and blowing leaves and (laughs) doing all that stuff. I have a soundproof, somewhat soundproof studio set up, but not that soundproof and they're right outside your window. So I was thinking, okay, you know, with everything going on in the world, this is uh, certainly nothing to complain about or worry about. Uh, life is pretty good when you can sit in your home in Palm Springs and, and you know, call in and do your radio show. So I want to talk about that. I, I want to talk about what's going on in the world, and, and you and I can have a little conversation around it. And in the second segment, we can bring the stream in, and you can ask them. Uh, we can kind of continue what we did on Saturday. You know, for those of you that watched, on YouTube and Facebook, we had a live, uh, our third live reset summit with the stream, and Debbie co-hosts that. And they came through, and we talked quite a bit uh, amongst ourselves and with the stream regarding racism, regarding the, the the protests that are going on right now, the riots that are going on right now. Uh, the conversation shifted a little bit from pandemic to that uh, because it's certainly the topic at hand, at least in the United States. And I've, I've spoke to several people outside the United States. And, of course, that's just world news right now with, with the chaos that's going on in this country. So we're going to dive into that a little bit. And I'll, I'll kind of let you start with your thoughts on uh, kind of picking up where we left off on Saturday, your thoughts on, on what you're seeing and, and what's going on and just your perspective to get the, the ball rolling here. Hmm. Yeah. We've really got some stuff going on here in the United States. We've got a lot of people focused on, they're just angry. You see a lot of people that are just angry. And what I would like to do is continue on the path that the stream always takes us down. And that is one of looking for appreciation in what is happening. And even though I know that might sound so off the wall here just bear with us maybe this is a time for us to do this differently you know all of this violence and anger has never worked before so why not consider that there may be another way to do this and if all of us could go into the space of looking at what is possible looking how that this reset which is what the summit was on saturday and what i do believe truly that we are in and i agree with you david on that 100 percent. this reset it is the time to see what can you do not what's happening not what you can't do but truly looking at what you can do understanding that we've all came here to experience this life as human beings. So how can we best pull together as human beings? 
and do it from a space of appreciation. And I'm going to, I can't wait to talk to the stream some more today about uh, how that we can appreciate even some of the things that are the, the harshest for us to see. Exactly. And it, using the term appreciation, a lot of it, it takes a deeper dive into the stream's teachings to really get into what appreciation means. Because one thing that we learn from them is that there's contrast on all topics. There's positive and negative in everything. Mm -hmm. And of course, the, the, the negative that's happening now beyond the, the murder of George Floyd, of course, that was a negative event that took place. But the protests, the, the riots, the looting, all of these things, which are separate things, but all of these things can be viewed positively or negatively. The, the, the negative is, is that property is being destroyed and things are being stolen and people are being hurt. The, the positive is, is that it is highlighting the racial inequality in our country and police brutality and you know, the things that have been going on for quite some time that, that we're not seemingly able to solve. And we're talking about it now more than ever. This is, this is as heated as I recall uh, since Rodney King. And yeah. you know, Romini and I were talking about Rodney King the other day right after all, all of this sort of transpiring. And that was 30 years ago. And, and there, were, there were mass riots and things like this after that. And it brought about, it moved the needle a little bit, I think, but obviously it didn't solve the problem because here we are 30 years later still having the same issue and still having the same conversation. Right, and it's time to maybe change that conversation. It's maybe time to start looking at what what we can, what can we do rather than fueling the, the, the fire that's already going. You know, I haven't yet seen a forest fire that was, uh, Got, that was under control because they were uh, adding more fuel to. They weren't pouring gasoline on it. Instead, they were doing. They were doing the thing that I'd love everybody to do and looking for the solution: water. You know, putting water on the flames and and putting them out. And you see armies of people pulling together in these situations when we have national disasters. So think about that. When we've had a national disaster, that's a fire, a hurricane, a a flood, a tornado. The, uh, us humans, we pull together. We we pull together to help. Why is it different for this? Why must it be different for that? So for why must we do this this way? I don't think we must. I think it's maybe time to look at this as being um, the natural disaster of the human being with our with our beautiful polarity, and now we can do something different and we can pull together as humans. You know, I do believe peace on earth is possible if we were to all get our heads straight, get out of our ego a bit. Yeah, well, I think anything is possible for sure. And, you know, the stream talks a lot about contrast and the value of contrast and that we're all here on different paths and they're guiding us to appreciate the differences and understand that we're never going to all agree, but that doesn't mean that we can't desire peace and work toward that because in the working toward peace, we, we are expanding. So, the way I look at the, the the riot, the negative aspects of this, of course, a peaceful protest, there's very little negative aspect to that. But, you know, riots, people being beaten in the streets, uh, you know, property being destroyed, things being stolen, which is the least of it to me among those three things, that will die down. Just like everything else, you know, the attention to that will die down. The, 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 the burst of anger is happening right now, justifiably so for many. And I understand it. I understand it from the perspective of a white man. I cannot understand it from the perspective of, of a person of color. I, you know, I can try to, which is a good thing, uh, but I haven't lived that experience. You know, I, I'm a gay man. I have, I have definitely experienced discrimination. You know, I have had to leave jobs because of the fact that I was gay and, and things of that nature. So I've had a little taste of it, but it's not the same. You know, I, I don't walk around as a walking target based solely on the way that I look and color of my skin. That's a unique experience. And that experience builds character for many, and that experience actually makes many stronger, but not everyone. There, there are a lot of people that are continually, continually oppressed because of the color of their skin. And 
it's definitely part of the contrast of our world, and eventually it will be solved by no other means than the fact that I think humanity will evolve into eventually just kind of assimilating. You know, we're seeing signs of that all over the world, but not fast enough. And it seems like we move the needle and, and things get better. And it seems like we're, you know, we're seeing more equality. You know, the United States, we elect a, a black president and reelect a black president. So we had a black president for two terms, eight years. And then the reaction to that is something very opposite of that. And, you know, people don't like it in spiritual circles when you get overly political. And I have to tell you, I don't give politics a lot of power in my life, but I follow politics. And I think you would really have to have your head buried in the sand. To, to not see that, that there's definitely some racism going on at the, at the highest levels of office in the United States, and it sort of fuels the fire. If nothing else, just the, the silence around, you know, what's going on right now from the president. Mm-hmm. It, it's, it's maddening. And so I can't blame anybody that wants to get out and get that anger out. And, you know, and we've gone through this period of this pandemic. People have lost their jobs. People have, have gotten sick. People have lost loved ones. We don't know what's going to happen next. There's mass fear. There's all this economic uncertainty about what's going to happen next. And then, you know, you you fuel a layer on top of that, three race-related incidents that were global news, not just national news, uh, in a a week or to two weeks' time, you know. And and I'm sorry, I forget the man's name in Georgia uh, that, that was shot and killed for absolutely no reason. He was just out jogging and a couple of, of rednecks um, just decided to, to lynch him, and that's very troubling. And then we have the woman, the white woman in Central Park that calls the police on a black man just because he asked her to put her dog on the leash, which was the law. And I had a long conversation well, with some people this morning about that incident in, in particular and what you know, up and down your spiral look like and how we behave differently in positive vibration and negative vibration. And then, of course, it all culminated with the, the, the very public killing of George Floyd as he, as he begged for life. So it's all very troubling stuff. So the anger, whatever reaction is happening right now is understandable. I agree with you that the, 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 the violence and the looting and the destruction doesn't really solve anything. It highlights and it brings attention to, but it's not a tool for solving anything in and of itself. And when that dies down, and it will, what do we do next? And, and that's the thing. Does everybody just sort of settle down and go back to business as usual, or do we get the anger out and then go up our spiral collectively, if you will, up into higher vibration where solutions are and start talking about real solutions? And that's what I want. You know, the the bit of a platform that I have, um, you know, as a channel and an author and a host of a radio show and a podcast, I want that. You know, that, that, that's the best I have to offer with the platform that I've got. Because let's figure out how to, how to solve these things from a higher vibrational perspective. And it's very easy to say, well, we're going to solve it with love. <laughs> and that just pisses a lot of people off when you say things like that. Well, but in reality, yeah. you know, taking true. that higher vibrational <laughs> approach, though, is what works. So those of us that understand law of attraction, universal law, we do know that. Unfortunately, most people on planet Earth write that off as woo-woo craziness and don't want to hear anything about it. But you and I see people, you know, change their lives with these tools that we teach. And, and you can change anything if you understand vibration, if you understand, you know, tuning to a certain signal, if you understand claiming your personal power. That's really what I want to promote. Mm-hmm. Detuning fear. All of this happened over fear. And lower vibrational thinking, all of it was fear-related, all of it. So my mission in, in life, for the rest of my life, what's left of it, is, is eradicating fear. I think that that's, a, well, exactly. And the opposite of that is love. And love is the most powerful creative force in existence. And so it may sound funny come at this from love, but... I'll tell you what, the fear of the hate's not working, and we already know that. So my guess is that, well, in my world anyway, in my life, the times in my life where things have changed are when I do it differently, when I make a different choice, when I make a different decision. And I think that that's what this is headed to. We know this is all going to come to a close, and then what's next? And it is that. It is the solution-based 
what can we do? And it starts right with you, the person, the listener. It starts right with me. It starts right with David. It starts right with us making those right decisions for our own existence, for our best and highest good with empathy and compassion and kindness. And guess what? When you have tools like you learn in Taya Bootcamp, and this isn't, you know, just an infomercial here, but seriously, when you do gather up these tools, what it gives you is the the things that you need to build your foundations and your homes in this reality. And it's really important right now. You want a solution, the solution is to start with you. You know, I can't very well, uh, I, I can't very well go to Huntington Beach, my favorite town in Southern California, and help with what I saw yesterday with the rioters and all of that. There, there would be nothing I could do if I were there. Nothing. I, I had it up on my phone, and, and I said, I'm just sending us so much prayer and so much love for to protect our officers that were out there. And uh, because it was, I mean, it really, it, it was kind of a, a bit for, of, heart, of a heartbreak, but I couldn't do anything. But I can start right here with me. And I've been blessed to take the Taya Boot Camp. I, you know, I'm a graduate of it. It's, it's one of these things where these are the tools that you use to go up your spiral, your emotional spiral, to learn how to manage your own existence, your own life. When things are out of control, it's because people aren't managing their own existence. Instead, they're so busy trying to manage someone else's and their intentions aren't even in check or in order. This is a really great opportunity for people to um, do some self tool, self self love work, and that's what Taya will help you do, as well as understand from a different perspective many things that you have had as experiences in your life that you deem as negative. You know, and I say, without your dark, you wouldn't know your spark because I've got a lot of those, just like a lot of us do. But I view yeah. it differently today. I totally view it differently today, David. It's not the same anymore. And people have, they can have this in their life. They can, they can make this happen for themselves if they would go to the Taya Boot Camp, go through something like Taya Boot Camp. And yeah, I was going to say, it doesn't have to be, we, gotta, we have to hit, hit commercial real quick, but it doesn't have to be Taya. I, I, I love talking about Taya Boot Camp, and I know everybody that graduates does too, but I want to promote something right now on the show that, that are tools that people can use in their real life. So let's talk about that when we get back, and then we'll bring in the stream. But when we get back, it'll be Debbie and I, and then we'll bring in the stream for you in just a moment. We'll be right back. Conscious Media for Conscious Minds. Ohm Times. Being a radio host on IOM FM allows you to build your show on a rich platform with the power of the Internet to fulfill your outreach goals and connect with a very specialized and global online audience, unlimited by time and distance. Ohm Times Radio will provide you with web relevance, a recognizable conscious brand, and with the standard of excellence that has accompanied every single Ohm Times endeavor. Host your show with Ohm Times Radio Network. As I'm sure you know, it is time to celebrate self-discovery and personal growth. But you know, your efforts have to be consistent in order to stay balanced and to overcome depression and fears. So, what new books are available? How do you stay centered? Elizabeth Joyce and her guests will help you find out. That's Elizabeth Joyce on Let's Find Out, Mondays at 6 p.m on Ohm Times Radio. We are experiencing a global reset and much of the world is living in fear, but I see Taya practitioners thriving in this new reality. I see Taya overflowing in every aspect of my life. It's just truly magnificent. There were times that I was not self-assured and didn't have the self-confidence, but now I'm fearless. I really love myself and I know how to live in joy and let go of all these things that held me back from living this beautiful life I've always dreamed of. And it's amazing how rapidly those things start showing up once you practice Taya. It changes everything about you. 
and it, it, it will affect all other aspects of your life, your health, your, your career, your money, your relationships. And I think that certainly has helped with my anxiety, with my mental health. I'm realizing that, wait a second, I deserve the best in life. Visit thestreamofdavid.com forward slash TYA to learn more about the Taya Mindset Practice and Taya Boot Camp. A social distancing tip. Putting distance between yourself and others is critical to slowing the spread of coronavirus. So here are ways to stay in contact without the physical contact part. Call, send a text, set up a video conference, post on social media, dedicate a song on the radio. If you have symptoms of fever, dry cough, and shortness of breath, call your health care provider before going to their office. For more info, visit coronavirus.gov. Let's all do our part, because we're all hashtag alone together. Brought to you by the Ad Council. We are back here with Debbie G talking about current events, talking about putting together real tools in our lives right now to help address this because we can't just sit back and, and expect somebody else to address it for us. And we certainly can't sit back and wait for politicians to do things. I was saying earlier that, you know, you, you can't help but follow politics, especially if you're in the United States right now, but I don't give it much power over my life. And I haven't in a long time. And, and I found that I can thrive regardless of, of who the president is or, or who my congressman is or, or anything of that nature. So I don't give it a lot of power. What I do give power to is, is personal vibration, building your personal bubble of reality, and contributing from a high vibrational perspective to the collective consciousness. That's what really changes things. When the collective starts to shift, and I was sharing with Debbie earlier you know, Debbie, I, I'm a gay man. I've been openly gay for a while, and I grew up in the 70s and 80s. You and I are the same age. And I'm sorry, I just outed your age. <laughs> I'm, uh, that's really okay. Well, <laughs> well, I, I tell you what, you you look amazing for a 52 year old. So you you could pass for 39 in a heartbeat, maybe 35. But um, I do that. but. Yeah, I didn't see a lot of gay people on TV when I was a kid. And when I did, they were, they were you know, vilified. They were made fun of or, or evil in some uh -huh. way. You know, Three's Company, uh, you know, J Jack Tripper was, uh, was pretending to be gay so he could live with these two women. And, you know, it was constantly made fun of. So that was what I saw on TV. And then Billy Crystal on Soap, you know, that was another character. It was never really – that was a somewhat positive character. Um but he was always suffering at the hands of somebody's, you know, ridicule on the show. And it wasn't until the late nineties when Will and Grace came along that I started seeing positive gay characters on, on television. And that shifted the narrative for gay people because people were becoming more accustomed to it. Now it seems like everybody has someone openly gay in their family and that's really shifted things. Well, I see the same thing with race when people are suddenly around someone of a different race that perhaps they, they were prejudiced against in the past, a lot of times that shifts and that changes. So it really is about broadening your perspective and having some friends and people that you're really comfortable with that are not just your race. And Ramina and I, Ramina works uh, in the business with me and she's a friend and she's a black woman. And, she, she the, the entire first hour of our meeting today, we listened to her. And there is a perspective out there that as, as white people, we shouldn't even be talking about this. We just need to shut up and let everybody be angry and protest. Well, I don't have to do that either. You know, I, I can certainly try to make sense for myself and for other people based on spiritual teachings, which is my field of expertise currently, of, of how we can help, what we can do, and teaching personal empowerment to everyone, uh, really bringing everybody to, to feel their worthiness, regardless of the color of their skin, and understand that we all create our bubble of reality and that, that fear is a very damaging thing on both sides. The, the situation with the, the killing of George Floyd, that was fear-driven, and I understand that. So how do we eradicate that fear? Because fear is very, very prevalent across humanity on planet Earth right now. You know, animals instinctively have a little bit of fear in them to get out of harm's way. And that's what fear was really intended to do for us. Well, somewhere along the line, along the way, 
somebody decided that, hey, this fear thing, this fear emotion works really well in humans. Let's use it to really control their behavior. And now it's, it's everywhere. There's so much negative fear-based thought out there and so many negative acts because of fear. And racism is a fear-based act in and of itself. You, you are afraid of someone who is different than you. And you are afraid they're, quote, unquote, taking over your country. Or they're going to come into your neighborhood and, and you know, rob and, and, and kill people or something along those lines. All of those assumptions are deadly, obviously. What are your thoughts on that? Well, my thought on that is <laughs> Don't you uh, love my loaded question? Yeah, yeah. And I'm going to probably stick with um, imagine, imagine if rather than – than, than reacting in anger, we took a moment to think about what was real for another human being as a human being with compassion and empathy. So I think it's going to, I think that in order to really shift the fear it is going to require action steps with, with true empathy, with human beings being empathetic, not feeling sorry for, but empathetic, being understanding, being compassionate and being seriously curious about what's real for another person fear happens in the and in the unknown a lot too you know that right like we fear it right. we don't know what to expect and what right now this world is in that space i don't know what to expect you know we don't know what's going to happen and there's a lot of this you know fear is is taking a lot of this fear is taking place so what if we started right now with the people in our own life that we know are scared right now and reach out to them and say, I'm, I'm imagining what you're feeling right now is probably pretty scared because you're over there, you know, alone or you're, you haven't been able to go out. Maybe it's an older person. Reach out empathetically. We start with us. We start from here. There isn't anything. I don't think there's, there's nothing I can do other than start right, right where I'm at. And this is what I'm encouraging everyone to do. To start right where you sit and truly think about what might be real for another human being with empathy and compassion. And how can you show up for them today? You know, a lot of fear happens when we get stuck in our own head, at least in my world. I get stuck in my head. And um, the only thing that's going to get me out of it most of the time is when I'm there for someone else. And I think we've got this all backwards and confused. That we, you know, and the fear is what's going to happen to me. Well, if we can lose that, that uh, thought and really look about, look at what's going to happen to all of us and make our decisions based from that space. And yeah, it's the heart conscious space. It's heart conscious coherence because we're using our frontal lobe to think with the minute that we shift into the empathetic state of being. And that's just my thought on all of it. That's how I believe that we shift it. And it starts with me here. Yeah. I think that, you know, that's all you can do is start with you. One thing I want to urge everybody to do, from, from my perspective, a lot of people are afraid to talk about this because they don't want to anger or upset anybody. But sometimes you've got to step out and take a risk and start up some conversations. And even if that conversation is met, with defensiveness or, or anger or misunderstanding, allow that to be and, and, and seek to take the conversation further. And remember that we talk a lot in, in the Taya practice and the stream teachings, and that's, this show is all about those things. We talk a lot about the vibrational spiral, the virtual vibrational spiral, spiral where our emotions are up in positive uh, territory sometimes, and our emotions can also be down. We call that DTS, down the spiral, down in negative territory. And the polarity is sort of drawing us up and down the spiral all the time. And there is work that we can do that will make, that will give us more control over this virtual vibrational spiral and really allow us to be up in higher vibration most of the time. That's what Taya really is, is releasing fear, moving up into higher vibration, being more intentional with your thoughts and, and, and manifesting a better reality because you're trusting the universe to really deliver everything you want to need. But in order to get there, you've got to understand polarity and you've got to understand some universal truths. And, you know, a universal truth is that, that all creation occurs via attraction, all of it. And so we're all attracting our reality to us. 
Now, the first thing people say when you say something like that is, well, why in the world would George Floyd attract being murdered? Well, we don't know what was going on in George Floyd's mind or his vibration. Uh, it could very well have been the fear of dying at the hands of police that, that placed him in the path of that event. And another thing that we do in this, this practice is we practice seeing things through the eyes of source, that higher perspective where we are all eternal beings, that death is not what we make of it as, as, as humans, that we are going to come to physical existence as, as, as some sort of physical being over and over again infinitely. And if you're listening, I don't know if your belief system allows for that or not. Um, I don't ever ask anyone to take everything the stream teaches as gospel. You know, I, I, I suggest sampling everything that you want to sample and discerning your preferences and, and figuring it out for yourself. Because, again, we all create our bubble of reality and I never want to be preachy with this message, and I, I never want to present it as one-size-fits-all teachings. Universal law is universal law, but not everybody is ready to accept that they, A, create their own reality, that people do create bad things for a higher purpose in their lives. That's, that's hard for a lot of people to wrap their heads around. But it does help you sort of make sense of, of these, these things that seem very senseless in our world. And I don't ever want to hear about anyone getting murdered again, ever, 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 ever. And I, I know you don't either, and most people listening do not. But we all know that it's going to happen. And if we allow these things to take us racing down our spiral, racing down into lower vibrational territory, there's not a lot of constructive things that, that are available down there. You know, the anger, get out and burn a building, yell at somebody, have a battle on social media, scream at your family. You know, just do things that absolutely do not solve anything. The, the, the positive contrast of that is that it highlights the need to go up into higher vibrational territory and come up with real solutions. But in the anger phase, that's not available. We, we've got to go up in vibration. But the, the interesting thing is we talk about polarity a lot in Taya, and that polarity will drag us down no matter what. We will go down into negative vibration. And the purpose of that is so that we do drop down into negative creation territory and create some unwanted things in our lives so that we can solve them and expand in that process. That's how the entire universe was created and how our planet was created and continues to regenerate and, and expand. So that's the purpose of life. And we wouldn't have new creation if we didn't go down our spiral and, and create negative things. I love what you say, Debbie, you wouldn't have your spark if you didn't have your dark, right? Without your dark, you wouldn't know your spark. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's exactly what that is. So yeah. when you think about things like that, it can actually bring you to a point of appreciation for negative things. And if you look at George Floyd as an eternal soul and understand that he is in his completed state now as an eternal soul being looking back at his lifetime and appreciating it from that higher perspective. And we're all going to end up there one way or another, hopefully not the way that he did. I don't wish that for anyone, but that was his life experience, and that was his life journey, and the only thing we can do now is find a path to appreciation. For those of us that do not know him or did not know him personally, that is a lot easier than for people that really knew him and loved him, right? But I work with people that do this type of work that do find that level of appreciation, and when that is I, the, the thing that I can promise you, everybody that's listening is that when you find your path to appreciation for someone whose life was not what you wanted it to be or isn't what you want it to be, that really detunes the hurt and the anger and the fear and all the negative emotions that revolve around that. And you can see them in a different light of appreciation. And if you're wanting to have some sort of ongoing connection to them after they've crossed over, that is your clearest path to that because they're existing in a higher vibration once they're no longer human and they've released their ego and all that comes with that. And when you stand in appreciation for the positive aspects of them, you are connecting yourself directly with their energy. So if that's what you want, appreciation is the key. Even if you don't appreciate fully, or at least at the moment, how their life went or how their death went, there is a path to that. And it's, it's a growth experience for all of us to view it that way. And it takes time. And it's going to take time for this anger and this hurt to, to die down a little bit. And when it does, polarity will draw the collective vibration up into positive territory. 
And if we all allow ourselves to go there collectively as human beings, as humanity, then all of a sudden we're going to see some solutions and some change emerge. I agree. So we have two minutes left before break. So obviously the stream is not appearing today. <laughs> when we get back, though, um, I'm going to, I'll wait two minutes for break. So you have one more thought that you can share, Debbie. When we get back, I'm going to read this letter uh, that I channeled for a young man on Instagram that, that asked uh, the stream to make sense of the senseless killing of black people at the hands of, of law enforcement. I'm going to read that when we return. Do you have any other thoughts before we head out to the next break? Um, actually, not really. Just the other than I am truly. All right, save that for when we return, and we'll get that. We'll get back to you and return, and then I'll read that. We'll be right back with Debbie G. Feed your soul with waves of consciousness on Ohm Times Radio. Ohm Times Magazine is one of the leading online content providers of positivity, wellness, and personal empowerment. A philanthropic organization, their net proceeds are funneled to support worldwide charity initiatives via Humanity Healing International. Through their commitment to creating community and providing conscious content, they aspire to uplift humanity on a global scale. Ohm Times co-creating a more conscious lifestyle. Consistently attract soulmate clients begin showing up on brand, monetizing on your calling. Welcome all spiritual coaches, leaders, healers, light workers, and practitioners to a show that turns you on in your business and amplifies your magnetism. I'm host, catalyst, and spiritual business coach, Rosalind Fung, and I'm here to journey with you into the juicy and help you discover where the real gaps are. Ignite your mindset and soul with strategies and systems as each episode takes you to the sweet spot that activates your soulgasmic business by tuning in on Tuesdays at 10 a.m. Mountain. Join me for your light language activation and let's magnetize and monetize. I'm David Strickle, channel, author, and creator of the Taya Mindset Practice. Taya is a set of mindset tools that I co-created with the eternal wisdom of the stream. Join us in the Taya community where we learn to release fear and truly trust the universe to deliver everything that we want and need. This work is profound. If you do the Taya Boot Camp and maintain a daily practice, you will fundamentally change your life. I've maintained my practice pretty regularly since graduating. I meditate every day. I trust the universe to deliver what I want. I set intentions for my day and I monitor my vibe up and down my virtual spiral. Doing these things consistently and regularly has made me a better father to my kids, a better lover to my partner and a better boss to my team. This work is transformational and it will completely change your life. I can't recommend it enough. Learn the mindset practice that is changing lives all over the world. Visit thestreamofdavid.com slash TYA to learn more and book your free discovery meeting today. Opiates has taken everything and everyone I've ever loved away from me. Everything. I blew my ankle out and I got prescribed pain pills by my doctor. If making my detox public is going to help somebody, I'm all for it. I just wish I would have had a warning. Opioid dependence can happen after just five days. Know the truth. Spread the truth. A message from Truth, the Ad Council, and ONDCP. We are back with Debbie G. So, Debbie, you were starting a thought just before uh, the commercial break. So go ahead and finish that up. Yeah, yeah. I would. You would ask, you know, do I have anything to add to what you were saying? And I, I really didn't actually, because I think that you really laid that out uh, so beautifully. I, I don't think I could um, expand on that any better than than what you already had. I really love this letter though that you're about to read because I did. You've shared this already, and I am looking forward to you sharing it right now because it's quite profound. So this is a letter that, uh, that that I channeled for a young man 
on Instagram who reached out uh, via our Instagram account, the Stream of David, and wanted the stream to help him make sense of the senseless killing of black people at the hands of law enforcement. So this is what they had to say. <clears throat> you are all humans here having a contrasting human experience. We have said that you all choose your point of entry to planet Earth vibrationally, and those who choose more difficult paths are souls seeking greater expansion. Earth is a physical environment full of what you perceive as contrast, the mix of positive and negative. You come and discern your preference for things that you appreciate, and in your experiencing things that you do not appreciate, you ultimately create expansion and allowing solutions to flow. From your human perspective, you do not want things that you perceive as negative to occur, and we certainly understand that a police officer pinning down an unarmed man and ignoring his pleas to breathe is something that most never want to occur. But things such as this have been happening for as long as history has been recorded and even prior to that on your planet. The difference now is that you have the technology to record it and send that image all over the world and stir a cry for change. But the change, change seems slow if not completely absent. It may indeed seem as though things are getting worse in the global sharing. Accepting that all creation occurs via attraction, you must accept that every negative experience is a co-creation by everyone involved. If you follow our or others' teachings on law of attraction and polarity, you know that you are all attracting everything into your lives. This is the point when many will say, why would anyone attract, allegedly, being killed by a police officer? You know from our teachings and your own life experiences that you attract things that you want and things that you do not into your lives. In the case of George Floyd, you do not know what was going on in his vibration that would have placed him in the path of that event. A plausible theory would be that his own fear justifiably of dying at the hands of a police officer placed him in the path of that. Regarding the officer who kept his knee on Mr. Floyd's neck as he begged for air, you do not know what was going on in his vibration that drove him to such an act, nor will we take our vibration to that place. Our perspective of humanity is that Earth, like all physical environments, is an imperfect place full of contrast, but that positive always prevails. You are eternal beings having a temporary human experience, and physical life is delicate. Being human and being empathic or even just humane will drive anyone with those qualities to anger over things such as this. How you channel that anger will determine future events. You get what you focus upon, and you cannot hold others from their contrast. That does not mean that you should simply ignore things such as this and focus solely on your reality. Your level of involvement is your choice, and there is no right or wrong. If your desire is to inspire positive change, we guide you to view the contrasting event from a higher perspective, understanding your eternal nature and that no human can truly end that which you are. Only take away the human form and that transition is not what many of you often perceive it to be. <clears throat> when you stop viewing life and death as the end of a being and start appreciating every path, even if it's one you do not want as your own, and you begin showing the world what higher vibrational living looks like, where fear-driven acts such as racism are minimized, and you understand that when you look for bad in someone, you will find it, and that when you look for good, you will find that this topic will begin to shift. It may not be soon enough from your human perspective, and we see many speak of world peace. The issue there is that you are all here having contrasting physical experiences, and you are all on different paths. When you stand in appreciation of every path and see the value and the contrast and appreciate those who come with the odds stacked against them, and perhaps even depart physical in a way you deem unjust or evil, you are truly connected to a higher perspective. You do not have to follow, <clears throat> excuse me, you do not have to allow that to stop you from desiring positive change, but pushing against clearly doesn't move things swiftly. This will likely reach a boiling point and those who set their sights toward improving the issue from within, no longer feeling like victims, but feeling empowered to manifest better circumstances without needing others to change 
will find a path to solutions. This is based, as all things are, in universal law. Part of the contrast of being human is that you are often taught the opposite of universal law. You are taught to think like victims, that bad things happen to good people, and that the world is just unjust. You are taught to give your power away to your government or religion and pray for the best. But you do create your reality, and trying to change the reality of others is futile. The very best you have to offer is the high vibration version of you. Be the one who is not pushing against. Be the one who sets a high vibe example. Be the one who promotes personal power. Be the one who leads young black men, in this example, to believe in themselves and their worthiness, that they are safe and valued and able to manifest anything that they desire. That likely sounds like a different planet to many, but you have examples of a few who have proven this to be true. Why is that? How did that occur? Belief is the key. Humans often absorb the bigoted thoughts that are directed toward them. You place yourselves in the path of contrast simply by being different. The high vibe work is to find a path out by loving yourself more, by setting the example, by remembering the good in the world, even when bad things happen. You can desire change, but anger and fear directed at creating more anger and fear will not solve much. Since protest and mass anger has not changed these events in centuries, imagine disrupting the collective negative vibration with pure love for all, including self-love for those considered quote-unquote less than, and even love for those who judge others based on the color of their skin, having empathy for their fear-based hatred from such a low vibration, literally being the higher vibrational being that you truly are and not allowing yourself to dip into that low vibration of hating the racist. Battling what you perceive as evil with love and light will bring the change you seek. Even if it's easy to dip into negative vibration, as you are often taught to do, all the solutions are in higher vibration always. Wow. Wow. I mean, and I'm curious, what did he, what did he say back? Did he respond? Oh, he was very, uh, it was very positive, his response. Uh, he, I don't know him. Uh, he's somebody that follows me on Instagram. Uh, he's a, he's a uh -huh. younger black man, very young, I think, uh, and he had a very positive response to it. Uh, and I, I sent it to Raminia. I did a recording of that and put it up on the YouTube channel. So if you want to hear it again, uh, certainly you can listen to the replay of this show on Home Times, or you can go over to our YouTube channel, The Stream of David, uh, where I shot a video uh, reading that letter a little, a little better than I just did live on air. Um, so... The, the, the face value reaction from Romina was that hearing those words spoken from a white man angered her a little bit. But as a spiritual being and a spiritual leader, she totally understood and it resonated deeply. And it's actually inspired deeper conversation between the two of us. And, and I learned her perspective on a deeper level this morning in our meeting, and, and it was a little different than what I had. So not, for, not uh, contrary to what the stream shared, but she opened my eyes. To her perspective as a human being and you know that that was helpful to, to shift my perspective even a little further and the point that she made this morning is you know we're, we're vilifying the looting that we're seeing and of course it's not just black people that are looting there's all sorts of looting going on but she pointed out that you know people have been looting in different ways for centuries and it's very true you know people that uh, get tipped off uh, of a stock tip and go sell their stock uh, in the stock market and uh, before the, the public knows the same information that's insider trading, it's illegal. It's a form of looting, but it happens all the time. Uh, you know, the, the cash grab that U.S. corporations just had with this uh, stimulus package, $500 billion went to corporations, uh, really without a lot of policing. Uh, is that not looting also? It, it's all the same. So the looting is the least of my worries. You know, I, I hate to see someone lose their business to, to theft or being burned down or vandalized or, or something like that. You know, the, the big corporations can weather this stuff a little better. You know, I hate to see it. Yeah, it's not something I want to see, but I understand it. I understand the outrage and the, the anger. Uh, and, you know, some people are protesting and some people are just angry and other people are taking advantage of the situation. It's all over the place. At the end of the day, it's all a collective negative vibe, uh, you know, when you're destroying things out of anger. And you're actually bringing more things to be angry about to yourself if you understand the law of attraction. 
But eventually that wanes. People go up their spiral, and then from a higher vibrational place, maybe some solutions will spring forward, and, and that's really what I'm trying to promote. I'm not saying don't be angry. I'm not saying don't protest. You know, do what you feel compelled to do, but understand that when all of that is said and done, what is the real solution that's going to come from this? That's what I want. I, I'm, I Exactly. That is it right there. We want that, and that real solution, um, I just keep going back to it's got to start with self, you know, it's got to start right in our own house, in our own home, in our own life, so that we can expand that out. Because if everybody just got responsible and accountable for their own being and their own state of being, it would, it would be a, a miraculous thing would happen, you know? Um, yeah, well, I, you know, the, the, the... go ahead. I was going to say, you know, I was brought up, David, with my dad. My last name's Garcia, and my dad's been my dad since I was uh, two years old. And I've always used the name. But my mom is redheaded. My dad is Mexican-American. It's how I grew up. I grew up believing that everybody was the same. I didn't have – I'm very blessed like this. I, I actually dig it because I was brought up to see everybody the same. It didn't make, I didn't understand racism at all. I still don't get it whatsoever. If you cut, if you get cut and you bleed red, what is that telling you? What does that tell us? Hello. If you get cut and you bleed green, okay, I might look at you funny. (laughs) Well, even if they do, it's okay, right? Well, yeah, like even if they did, I mean, right, exactly. But what I love about this is just the idea that, that we can really embrace each other and now you know you brought up something important too and that is befriending someone that might be quote unquote different even though i don't like the word different but in order to to make my point here we this is part of the peace on earth uh the peace on earth is possible uh that i'm a peace on earth leader i'm a team leader and it's that's one of the uh, games that we play. That's one of the, the steps in it is to befriend other people. Isn't that something? You know, there's actually things out there that are being created right now to, to make these things happen. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, it, it, it's hard to get past hate, but, you know, when someone, when someone hates you, sometimes it's really hard to get past that. But somebody uh-huh. eventually has to raise in vibration and be the quote unquote bigger person, the higher vibrational person, and seek to understand the origin of the hatred. None of us were born that way. You know, a little infant does not come yeah. into the world hating someone. You, you were taught that, and I was taught that. I, I grew up in the South. I grew up. I was born in Texas. I grew up in Louisiana. My father was not, uh, or is not. Uh, I don't remember him ever saying anything that made me think that he was racist at all. He's, he's a pretty liberal guy, especially for a guy from Texas. Uh, my mother, though, and my grandmother were. And, you know, the N-word was used very liberally in my grandmother's household and with my mother. And, you know, I remember watching the Cosby show as a, as a kid and, and my mother wanting me to turn it off when she was in the room. She didn't want to, you know, didn't want to see it. Uh, and I love the Cosby show. And I question that stuff early on. You know, I was definitely raised in, in a very racially divided, racist situation and could never reconcile. Early on, I'm talking fourth grade, you know, around this, this age, because I remember Sunday school. I, I quit going to Sunday school around that time because I questioned too much, and I didn't like that. Little did I know back then that I had this thing coming to me that I called the stream that was sort of making me question, which was a good thing. But yeah. the question yeah. I had is, you know, you're telling me in one side of the mouth, that your mouth, that we're all God's children. And then the other side, you're telling me that black people can't attend our church. And, you know, there's certain, there was, I, I was exposed to a certain facet of, of religion that even would pull out Bible quotes and twist it into people who have darker skin are less than and evil in God's eyes. It didn't say anything like that to me, but they interpreted it that way. So, you know, you can pull things out and interpret them however you want. And if you're using that to hate somebody that's different from you and justifying it with your religion, that's that's from a place that I can't identify with and never have. But I've been around enough of it to I understand that that's their mindset. I just don't understand how people can progress through life and experience other human beings and stay there. That's a little foreign to me. You know, what is making you stay in that place? 
what are you not experiencing in your life that you, and, and again, it's kind of that fear-based victim mindset, you know, why are you blaming, and, and we've got to go in just a moment, but I'll, I'll let you wrap up, you know, why are we blaming somebody else? for our life not going the way that it should. I'm all about personal empowerment. If you're not getting what you want out of life, that's on nobody but you. So let's table the conversation and we will regroup this week on Spirituality Going Wild. If you don't know who Debbie G is, I should have done a more formal introduction for you, but you're gonna be on here enough. They're all gonna get to know you really well. Uh, Debbie has a fantastic Facebook group called Spirituality Gone Wild. And you've you've got some exciting things. Do you wanna take us out in the next few seconds just uh, telling us about that? Oh, God, yeah. Spirituality Gone Wild on Facebook is is a fun platform for people who are doing really great things to be seen. And uh, this Thursday, we have Dr. John Demartini, which is going to be a really great uh, experience. But mostly it's the place to come see David and I and the whole gang and come interact with people who um, are actually doing things in this world um, to see some of the solutions and to see it done differently. Fantastic. Yeah, and you had Deepak on over the weekend, didn't you? Yeah, Deepak Chopra. We sure did. Yeah, uh, we were on Saturday right. day and Deepak was on Saturday night, right? That's right. That's right. And um, we have, yeah, Greg Brayton was on two weeks before that and Marianne Williamson as well. So we have a lot of great shows coming up on the Saturday night Global Peace Tribe that is presented by Little Coach Academy and all of the other great people out there and the stream of david.com. You guys need to just come check out Spirituality Got Wild and see all the great shows you've missed from the stream of David. Yeah, fantastic. Thank you so much, Debbie.